Solids and elasticity. Let's start out by discussing solids. Classifications of solids. Solids can be divided into two groups. The first is crystalline, as seen in this natural example of a crystal to the right. Classifications of solids too. Crystalline solids always have ordered atomic structures, as shown in the diagram to the right. Note the specific locations of atoms and the bonds or connections between them. Classification of solids 3. Crystalline solids have a melting point. Take a look at the figure to the right. It illustrates how the temperature of a crystalline changes when it's heated, the section going up. We can find there is a stage during which the temperature of the solid is fixed, the flat or horizontal portion. This stage is called melting, and the temperature is called the melting point. After this, as you can tell, the temperature increases when it turns into a fluid. Classification of solids 4. Another state for solids is called an amorphous solid, such as candle wax in the picture shown to the right. Classification of solids 5. Amorphous solids always have a randomly arranged atomic structure, as in the diagram to the right. This makes its properties very different from crystalline solids, which are very regular and organized. Classification of solid 6. Amorphous solids have no melting point. In the figure, we illustrate the temperature change of an amorphous solid when it's heated. Note there is no horizontal plateau where there is a definite melting point or melting temperature. Density and thermal expansion. First, density. Density is defined mathematically as the mass per unit of volume. You probably know that gold has a much higher density than iron. It is very heavy per volume. Next, thermal expansion. We probably know that as solids are heated, they expanded, as shown in the diagram to the right. The ring increases in size when it's placed in the fire and heated. Density and thermal expansion 2. The thermal expansion effect is always characterized by a thermal expansion coefficient. The length change of a solid always increases linearly with respect to temperature change. We can describe this temperature change with a high temperature and a low temperature, a, f a longer length and an original length. And finally, the thermal expansion coefficient. This thermal expansion coefficient describes how much of a change in length per change in temperature. Density and thermal expansion 3. An application utilizing thermal expansion is very obvious. A representative case is a bimetallic strip, as shown in the figure to the right. A bimetallic strip has two different materials cemented together to form one strip. Due to the difference between the thermal expansion coefficients of the two different materials, the strip will become curved when temperature increases. One side will expand more than the other. This is the fundamental concept for most thermostats. Deformation of solids. To characterize the mechanical behavior of solids, we should address the stress-strain curves, as shown in the picture. The stress is a measure for the force causing deformation, and the strain is the degree of deformation. For example, when you stretch a solid bar, the stress can be regarded as the force applied, while the strain can be regarded as the elongation of the bar. In the figure, a typical stress-strain relationship is illustrated. In the first stage, the stress increases linearly with the strain. This period is called elastic behavior, and the limitation is called the proportional limit. As the strain increases further, the solid will enter a yield state. The point corresponding the maximum strain for this yield state is called the elastic limit, above which 
the solid goes into plastic behavior until a breaking point occurs. Three types of elastic modulus, number one. First, Young's modulus. This is defined as the tensile stress divided by the tensile strain. This means, for the tensile stress, the force per cross-sectional area. For the strain, that is the length change per original length. You can examine these quantities in the diagram to the right. Three types of elastic modulus, number two. Next, the shear modulus. This is defined as the shear stress divided by the shear strain. This basically just applies to a different direction, a shearing direction. The shear stress is the force per area again, and the shear strain again is a change in distance over the original thickness. Three types of elastic modulus, number three. And finally, the bulk modulus, which refers to volume. The bulk modulus is defined as the volume stress over the volume strain. In this case, the volume stress is the normal force per area, and the strain is the change in volume divided by the original volume. Example, squeezing a sphere. A sphere with a volume of 0.5 cubic meters and a bulk modulus of 8 gigapascals is immersed in water deeply. The pressure from this water is 20 megapascals. What's the change in volume of the sphere? First, apply the definition of bulk modulus. Next, we can rearrange or solve for our change in volume, our delta V. Substituting the values that were given in the problem, we get a change in volume of 0.125 times 10 to the negative third cubic meters.